We want to take this opportunity to thank God who has made it possible once again to be in his presence. And for those that are joining us for the first time, watching us from the screen, and those who were with us with our previous series, I want to encourage you this morning as we bring you the good news from Greensboro Assembly in the United States of America. We want to continue with our series entitled Imitating Christ Brings About and Demand Change. Now, you have Imitating Christ brings about change and demand change. Say with me, imitating Christ brings about change. Brings our change. Brings about change. Brings about change. And demand change. Na, and, and demand change. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In other words, if we want to imitate Christ, na, we need to be able to get ourselves ready to change. And experience the change from God. In our first series, we mentioned that we cannot imitate Christ from a distance. If you want to learn from your area head evangelist or money, you cannot sit here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and he be in Atlanta, Georgia, and expect her to be able to learn from him. We cannot imitate our God from a distance. To be able to learn from him, to be able to act like him, walk like him, and talk like him. We need to spend some time with him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So if we are saying this year, as the leadership has given unto us, that we are imitating Christ in this generation, then we must do well to get closer to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. In that same series, in the first series, we mentioned that the intentions of God that you and I will become like him. The very day that we were born, as a matter of fact, when you were conceived in the mother's womb, when you were blood in your mother's womb. God's intention concerning your life was to create you to be like him. Let us make the image. Let us make man in our own image. And that is why, that is why David saw it right. And said that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. So this morning I want to encourage you that you are not an ordinary person. You are not an ordinary Christian. You were created in the image of God in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We ended in that first series by encouraging you 
that you cannot experience the grace of God, you cannot experience the favor of God, you cannot experience the love of God from a distance. So for that matter, we want to encourage you once again that there is the need for us to get closer to Christ. Draw closer to him in your prayer life, in your Bible studies, so that you will be able to learn from him. Amen. Amen. And for those that followed us, through New York Central for the second series. We mentioned about the life of Apostle Paul. His life before he encountered Christ. How he behaved. And when he encountered Christ on the way to Damascus, the transformation that took place in his life. Hallelujah. I pray that even as you encounter Jesus Christ this morning, you will not live here the same. You will not live here the same. Hallelujah. We ended by saying that there are two groups of people in every church. We have the poor groups and we have the Peter group. We said that the first group, which was the poor group, I named it spiritually committed Christians. Say with me, spiritually committed Christians. Or you can say it better, spiritually committed Christians. And the second group is religiously committed Christians. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Everything about tradition, everything about religion, are so much, they are so much concerned about those things. But the spiritually committed Christians were the very people that the things of the Spirit are very, very important to them. And as a church, we have the Peter groups that they are the foundation of the church. God used them mightily to build the church, to establish the church. And we cannot overemphasize the sacrifices that they have made that has brought the church to this level. So we need to appreciate them. But they also need to understand that tradition has worked to a certain level. It's about time that we need to move on as a church. We need to bring the poor group to mingle with the Peter group. To be able to move the church forward. In the beginning of Christianity, you see the Peter group that when the Holy Spirit came upon their life, they won about 3,000 instantly souls for Christ. And if you are a religiously committed Christian, you may think that oh, that is enough. In that yeah. second series, we explained that God had to bring Paul in so that the church will move from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and to the outermost parts to be able to reach the modern day Gentiles. In that series, we explain those who are modern day Gentiles. People that do not speak our language. 
people that do not understand us. And I'm talking about our young people. They don't understand us. We don't understand them because they are in a different environment. But God wants us to reach them. It takes us who are traditionalists to be able to transform the way we think, reprogram our minds, to be able to go out there and arrest them for Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Actually committed Christians that we mentioned, the poor groups. You know, Paulo, we explained that looking at it, Paul was more traditionalist than even Peter. But the reason why he became Paul, the reason why his name and his lifestyle was changed, and God was able to use him to reach the modern day Gentiles, he encountered Jesus Christ. I pray that you and I will encounter Jesus. So that the way we think, the way we behave, the way we do things, we will change for better so that the souls of our young people will become the priority. Even as we continue for the third series, why don't you take your Bibles and we will read from the scriptures. Those that have your iPad, your phones, please turn with me to First Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 1. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Hallelujah. My second reading is taken from Galatians chapter 1, verse 13 through 16. For you have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church violently and tried to destroy it. I was advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely serious was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son Jesus Christ to me, in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult any man. Amen. Amen. The other version says that I did not consult flesh and the blood. Want to pick up our last passage, which is the main thing for the year. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. And 17. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in the church. Amen. Amen. In this passage, Paul was saying that look at me and learn from me. Because I have imitated Christ. Can you tell your co-workers fellow students friends in the campus in your community even as a pastor, as an elder, as an apostle of the church, can you tell others that look at me and learn from me? Paul had a testimony after encountering Jesus. Then he went on to say in that second passage that this was my life before. I was a persecutor. 
I made people very, very uncomfortable in the church. My life was such that nobody can stay with me or hang out with me for continuous one year. And because of me, Greensboro Church, North Carolina District, the church in the U.S. suffered. Now, Minty, Greensboro has suffered. North Carolina has suffered. The church became a revolving door. Now, I'm sorry, I'm going to see They come through one entrance and leave through another. Oh, we're free or far back. No, I'm far back. All because of me. I was very serious. I thought I was serving the God of my father. Now, maybe I imagine he said, some People can't hang out with you. You can't make friends for continuous a year. Because of you, somebody have vowed not to come to church. But this morning, I encourage you to change. If you are encountering Christ this year, then you must change. Hallelujah. Amen. But Paul, in the other page, said that a new page has opened to me. Now, now, can say, my eyes have opened. Many all because I have met Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Something has taken place within me, and what is going on within me is reflecting outside. So, people that Walk away from me. I are coming back to me. My, my life has been. become attracted to me. All because I met Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that you will meet Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. A notorious criminal. His life is now drawing many to Christ. All because he met Jesus Christ and something took place in his life. Hallelujah. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if we profess that we are Christians, if we call ourselves as men and women of God, we call ourselves elders of this church and pastors and uh, apostles of this church, members of this great church, then people must look at us and see change. Paul was saying that that was my life. Paul, no, say, but this is my life now. Meaning, change is possible. Shout with me, change is possible. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He went on to say that. Even if you don't believe me. Go and ask my very good friend. My son. My spiritual son. Timothy. And he will tell you. My way of life. And now. The way I live. What do people say about you? We went to Genesis conference. The January conference. The minister's conference in Ghana. The whole world, all the ministers and their wife went to a conference. And all of a sudden, a guy that uh, we went to school together for almost about 30 years. His name was George Ajuman. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. All of a sudden, among the ministers, I met George. And as George. usual, I was wearing my jeans and t shirts Then I look at him. Hey, so you are a pastor. 
And no wonder that guy, when he was at school, Pensa, believe me, this guy was a minister by birth. I, I didn't like him much, though we were in the same room. Because he will wake me up early in the morning. Let's go to morning devotion. And I, I didn't want to go. Over there in the school too, Katie, I, they used to call me Missy. That was my nickname. nickname was school. Yeah, the amma men was Oh, hallelujah! Amen. So when I met him, I said, George. You were a pastor. He said, "Yes, I'm a pastor." So, so no wonder hey, why. When you suffer, say, "Oh, me, you suffer." Misty, what? What are you doing here? I said, Misty, are you a pastor? Now, also, when you suffer, you, you, who? Oh, hallelujah! Amen. Then I hug him. Then I, me, then I told him that yes, I'm a pastor. Me catch a Where? Guy, me then I said in the United States. Oh, see, me see I didn't United mention States. about the apostle part or anything. My cousin was friend is so smart So we started talking about friends and other people that have gone to be with the Lord and some of our mates that are doing well in the system. Now your friend says he can and I'm for one 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 almost so close to Abrabomo. And we left. So during the conference, I was called to come a minister. And when my name was mentioned and introduced, immediately after the session, George ran to me. So you are an apostle. Change is possible. Because Pastor George has seen my way of life. During the school time. And now seeing something different. I pray that your friends will see something different. In you. When we were a child, we behaved like children. But now that we are old, now that we call ourselves Christians, now that we call ourselves pastors, now that we call ourselves apostles, now that we call ourselves believers let us behave as such hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. there was a great change in apostle Paul's life why because he started when he met Jesus Christ the Bible says that he started comparing certain things together. He was a man. Came from a very good background. But, and also well educated. So he analyzed things. He compared his old life when he was a religiously committed Christian and said to himself, no. When I compare that with my new life, I need to do away with everything. Oh, hallelujah. He compared the worldly kingdom earthly kingdom that comes without Christ and he compared that to the religiously or heavenly kingdom that comes with eternal life Apostle Paul started doing this he considers his previous way of life as an enemy to the cross and an enemy to progress anything that is progressing he was against it Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But he compared that to now that he is God is his father. 
nature. And he had become a joint head with his son. Oh, now I need Christ to suppo muanka se dia dia. Is that accounting everything what worthless? No, free as I said, near men you know. Compared to the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, free Christ to nim dia muanka. His model. Looking at Jesus as his role model. He said that I count everything but trash. Why? Because Boris. Jesus has become his role model. There is a saying of a young man that I like most, I love most. He wrote something and I quote. You can never become a good model if Christ is not your role model. You can never become a good model if Jesus Christ is not your role model. It was said by Michael Yaujimano Moko. Oh, apostle. Oh, hallelujah. When I survey the wondrous cross, uh, that is what Apostle Paul was saying. When I consider what the cross has done for me, I am counting everything but loss. My dear brothers and sisters, change is not easy. It takes sacrifices. You must give something before you receive something. Are you ready to give away certain things and receive from the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Few things that happened in the life of Apostle Paul I want us to talk about. When he encountered Jesus, the first thing that Apostle Paul did was that he changed his direction. Say with me, change of direction. And tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's about time. That you change your direction. Change of direction. Paul was heading towards Damascus. He was going there for a reason. And it wasn't pleasant. He was going to kill and to destroy. But when he met Jesus Christ, he decided to change. My humble my humble question to you this morning is that where are you going? Where is your spiritual location? And where are you going? Going with all these excesses. Going on, going with all the anger and bitterness. Going with hatred, pain, and frustration. Are you going? I want to encourage you to change directions. Imitating Christ Jesus. Demands change of direction. He said, "Bra, or share Christ on Paul had to redirect his focus. Instead of following the influences of his fathers, he was he was focusing. He was focusing." On the traditions of his fathers. But when he met Christ. He turned around. And changed his direction. Where are we going? With all these material things. That is taking our attention from Christ. What are we going? Where are we going with unnecessary competition and opposition in the church and in life? 
Why are we going with titles and positions? By biting each other. Where are we going? A day will come. That you and I. They will just measure. And some of us, the only thing that we will take with us is this. All the other suits and other shoes and the kentes and all that will not be going with you. Where are we going? That we can't even have time for our family members. Where are we going? That a man is building their mansions and the woman is also doing their own thing. Oh, so a man is wondering, a man is wondering. Where are we going? That the families have been divided. It's about time that we change the direction. And to the young ones, you can change your direction. You may have taken a course. You did that because of your parents. Every African parent wants their children to be doctors. And you did that to please your mom. After you finish the college, you don't like the job, you don't love the job. And you say that now that I am no longer living with my mom, I'm not going to pursue my vision. Parents, we need to understand. Every child was born with potentials. We need to identify it and encourage it. Not every child will become a doctor. Not every child will become a pastor. Some of us will become politicians. Some of us will become doctors, judges, presidents. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let us encourage. It's not too late. You can change your direction. If that course is not helping you, humbly discuss with your parents. And you can change direction. You don't do that alone. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Sit with your parents. Help them to understand who God created you to be. Where are we going? The Bible tells us that there is a way that seems right in the sight of God. But at the end thereof, where are you going with this gang? Going with this drugs? Going with these guns. Where We need to change. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. One other thing that happened to Apostle Paul, he did change his location. He was a man hanging around with these big shots. He was influenced by the leadership that were not helping him. Position is good, but in your workplace, the people that you are leading with, if their lifestyles are not helping you, you need to change a job. You need to change that location. Oh, hallelujah. In Luke chapter 19, the Bible tells us about a young man called Zach. Talking about Zacchaeus. A man who was born with talent. He landed a good job to become a tax collector but his profession became a hindrance we go to school we pray 
Give me a better job. We finished college with all these good degrees. And whatever job comes in our way, we just take it without even praying. This guy's job became a hindrance. This morning I pray that your businesses, your profession, your abilities and your potentials will not rob your integrity as a Christian. Everyone in that job is corrupt. But it should not rob your integrity. Because God has sent you there for a reason. You don't behave like them because you are not one of them. Hallelujah. But Zacchaeus realized his physical limitations and spiritual barriers will not help him to meet Jesus. So he started doing something about it. Until one day when Jesus was passing by in Jericho, and Zacchaeus wanted to experience Christ. But all of a sudden he became aware of himself. These are my limitations. This morning I want you to do a soul search. Search within your hearts. Search within your minds. And realize the limitations in your life. Things that are preventing you from encountering Jesus. Though Jesus is in your vicinity, Jesus is passing by. Jesus visits your church all the time. Jesus visits your home all the time. But you are not experiencing him because of certain barriers. Today is the day of salvation. Even as you watch me from this screen, I pray that if you would genuinely search within your hearts and tell the Lord that these are my limitations, take it away from me. He will snatch it. He will forgive you. And you have eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Zacchaeus did not only change his physical locations to experience Christ because the Bible says that he was a very short man like myself and he wanted to see Jesus so he had to climb this morning the cross of Jesus is available the tree of Jesus is available and he's looking for a young man and a young woman he is looking for individuals who will just do away with every pride and begin to climb. Oh, hallelujah. So when he realized limitation and do away with it, he climbed this and went further. Climbing the tree means that he knew his physical location, but he did change it for spiritual location. Because on that tree was where he saw Jesus Christ. On that tree, he experienced Jesus Christ. That tree, he heard the voice of Jesus Christ. This morning, may you hear from the voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may you experience him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as I prepare to close for this series, the test series, I want to encourage you to change certain things in your life. Be prepared to change. But finally, one thing that Apostle Paul did, he changed the way he thinks. 
tell it to Some of us are not doing well in life because of the way we think. Oh, this is impossible. Who told you that? You need to change your theology. Because one of the things that Apostle Paul did was he changed his theology. We will talk about it in the next series. The Bible says I can do all things. The sky should be your limit as a young person in this nation. Captain K, in that military, you should be the best of the best. A young person in that college, you should be the head but not the tail. If only we can change the way we think. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Think good about yourself. I am good because Christ lives in me. I can do it because Christ is with me. I will not remain here. I will climb up. I will excel in life. Why? Because I have Christ in me. I will not remain in this location. That is not where I was born to be. You were born to be like Christ. May we endeavor, may we do well to imitate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if we do that, a day will come when Jesus Christ appears, you and I will be like him. This morning, what I received from the Lord is what I've shared with you. I will see you in Chicago coming month as we conclude our series. God richly bless you. Amen. To be like Jesus